Good morning, class. Um, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, it's titled The Sound of Molecules, as I'm sure you can see. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Um, oh, but before I uh, get started, they did ask me to announce that the hour hall podium has been reported missing again. Um, if anyone uh, accidentally grabbed it after last class, just please return it as soon as possible. Uh, so that's squared away. I think we can get into the actual meat of the talk. Uh, so here are a bunch of the molecules we've been studying. And by a show of hands, how many of you have been working on your homework for this class and thought, wow, these are some really cool looking molecules, but I wonder what they sound like? Yeah, so pretty much everyone's hand went up, because this is like something that we all wonder like all the time since we were kids, you know? But the idea of hearing a molecule doesn't make sense because molecules are really tiny. So it doesn't make sense that we would be able to hear any sounds that they make. But maybe there's a way to turn the activities of molecules into sounds. Now, how would we do that? And what do I mean when I say activities of molecules? Well, you see, molecules are doing a lot of stuff. They're rotating around, they're stretching and bending, they're vibrating, and they're moving through space. And maybe there's a way to turn these motions into sound. And in order to understand what molecules actually sound like, we need help from our friend Spectroscopy Steve. And Spectroscopy Steve is great because he knows a lot about nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which is an analytical technique that chemists use to understand the structures of molecules. But it can also allow us to hear what a molecule sounds like. So what is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So here's some relevant equations. And pay special attention to the top two because those will be on the quiz following the lecture. So now that we have an idea of the, of the physics and math behind this, let's look at how this works in practice. So Steve is gonna take our molecule and put it inside of an NMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance machine. And when he does this, what is this machine? Well, it's basically, I'm simplifying a little bit here, but it's basically a really powerful electromagnet. And that's important because all of the atoms in our molecule are like little teeny tiny bar magnets. And when we put them inside an external magnetic field, they all align to face in the same direction as that dipole. But we can disrupt this alignment by adding energy in the form of light. <laughs> this causes the atoms to rotate around rapidly, but they gradually return to being back in alignment with the magnetic field. Let's see that uh, animation again, but this time plotting the amplitude of those oscillations over time. And we get a graph that looks something like this. And we can see the decreasing amplitude of these magnetic oscillations over time. And this graph is important, uh, or the, the key takeaway from this graph, rather, is that it's an amplitude versus time graph, which I've kind of hinted at already. And this is really important because that's exactly what sound is. Sound is and can be represented by an amplitude versus time waveform. So with that conceptual understanding, let's listen to some actual molecules. I feel like I've probably talked enough. Let's actually hear some sounds. So the molecule that I will be performing for you guys today is called Hippolyte J. And this is a molecule that one of the graduate students in the chemistry lab that I work uh, in on campus here spent a couple years figuring out how to make. He developed a really amazing strategy to make this really complex molecule from scratch. If you want to try making it at home, here's how he did it. And this molecule is just it's an amazing molecule, so I've always wondered what it sounds like. So I'm delighted to play for you guys today the world premiere of the sound of the molecule, Hippolyde J. Did you miss it? Here it is again. So yeah, that's what a three years of chemistry research sounds like. Um, but at this speed, it's so fast because the time scale of these atoms is so crazy fast. We can't really hear any details of the sound. So let's slow it down by a factor of 10. And at this speed, it kind of sounds like a weird molecular church bell or meditation gong or something. And the cool thing is different molecules sound slightly different. So here's a second one. Here's a third one. And here's a fourth one. And they all sound slightly different, but really those differences are very, very hard to perceive at this level. But that's because we're listening to these sounds as macroscopic observers of the micro, of the micro, micro molecular universe. Um, and in order to hear all of the details of these sounds, we need to zoom in. So I'd invite you to join me as we shrink down to the size of an atom and listen to these molecules up close. Now we've entered the molecules world. Let's hear that sound again, but up close. At this level, we can hear all the nuances of the sound as it decays. Once 
once the molecule's higher frequencies have faded away, we can even begin to hear the low rumble of the magnetic field. of the electrons whizzing around the nucleus. not concerned with individual molecules. Rather, they are concerned with vast collections of molecules. phase, the motions of molecules are very random and chaotic. But if we cool our sample down so that it becomes a solid, these vibrations straighten out as an orderly crystal structure forms. zoom in and hear these molecular grooves up close. This orderly crystal structure can be disrupted by dissolving our sample in a liquid solvent to form a solution.
I've just filtered out the sound of the solvent molecules so that we can focus on, our on the sound of our molecules being tossed around in the solution. Chemists can manipulate truly uncountable numbers of molecules in any way they like. For example, perhaps the chemist holding the solution that we're currently inside of decides that it needs to be warmed up. I'll leave you today with the sound of a chemical reaction, which we can hear by gradually morphing between the waveforms of a reactant and a product molecule. Certain frequencies come and go as bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. As you listen to the sounds of the bonds that hold our world together, that hold you together, and that hold you and your loved ones together, keep in mind that whenever a strong bond is broken, it is merely making room for an even stronger bond to form in its place.